Yo, 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 welcome to the TaskCast live from Dubai. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm your host, Kareem. You guys remember my partners in crime, Timmy and Ali. What's up, fellas? How are you guys doing? Amazing. Hope everyone's doing well. I feel like I said that. Ali? Do they say Ali or do they say Ali? Uh, same. Well, it depends how you want to say it. Ali, Ali, Ali. When I said Ali, it sounded same. weird. Do I normally say Ali? I think <laughs> I normally, normally say, say Ali, Ali right? Yeah, say I don't Ali. know why I did that. You said the Arab way. The, the, no, I said it the American way. <laughs> Ali. Ali. I said Ali, yeah. But normally <laughs> I say Ali. Ali. Oh, fabulously, yeah. Like I've been watching uh, Aladdin with the kids. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> and then Ali always calls me Kareem. He rolls the R. Kareem. It's really so nice. So it shouldn't be Kareem? No, it is. Of oh, course good, it is. Ali used to say your name in the US. Man, it's easy. Kareem. It's so easy. Kareem? Kareem. Or, or a lot of times when the teachers would read it, just quickly, right? <laughs> they would see Karen. It's obviously not even close to Karen, but they would just see it quickly. And they'd be like, Karen, Kara Mouse. Like, uh, it's like... We'll say, <laughs> we'll say Ali is a common name. Now, when I used to go to school in Australia, they used to say, Ali. Or Al- Ali. Allah, Allah, and yeah, no, I'll be like, it's Ali, Ali. Everyone knows the name Ali. Now it's common, obviously. Of course, of course. Yeah. Uh, Timmy, how did they fuck up your? Oh, it was only your parents who messed up your name. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone could hear. Everybody. My name was probably the most easiest to pronounce. What's your last name? Uh, Alasid or Alasad. Okay, okay. Right? So that's not as easy. What do yeah. people used to say for that? Alasid. Alasid. And then it just became the common way. You know, so in a sense, my sister and I just kind of changed our last name. So it's still spelt the same, but we changed the sounding yeah. of it. Um, because it the easier. Aussies couldn't just, they don't have the ain. Yeah, you know? yeah, of course. Yeah, they, Not like <laughs> us. The same yeah. as Ali. Yeah, yeah, Ali, they don't yeah. have it, so they just go Ali. So yeah. after a while, we softened, my sister and I, we just softened our last name and we've kept it. Nice. So, you know, so it's Timmy Alassid. Got you. Um, but uh, enjoying Dubai. Nice. Uh, Love and life, although what about the, 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 the weather at the moment is pretty <laughs> shocking right now with how windy it is. It has been really windy, really, really windy. And cold too. Yeah, like tell w- me about without, it. Even if you take the wind out, it's been pretty cold. And then when you throw the wind in there, it's been, it's yeah. been brutal. L- low 20s is freezing, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I well, mean, for us it is. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. I mean. I've acclimated. I, I, but I not realized. in Oz, right? In Oz it gets way oh. colder. Well, right now it's 40 something degrees Celsius, right? But my mum is actually here visiting and she's seeing me rugging up and freezing. <laughs> she's like, Tim, this is, we used to do this. This is, this is spring this weather. Is right, right, right. This is our autumn weather. We would pray you know? for this weather. Yeah, 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 yeah I'm, sure. like, I'm cold, I'm freezing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? Definitely, definitely. Just because we don't want people to get like the wrong idea and like, oh, it's cold. It's no, like snow no, no. weather. No, so it's beautiful. Well, they, the they might think come. we're bullshitting because cold in yeah. the <laughs> desert. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> right. they can look it up. It's like a high 50s, low 60s when we're talking mm, about Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Yeah. It's been in like the low to mid 20s. Um, which is like kind of well, crazy. Man. Well, you could argue this is the best time to come to the UAE because the weather is so nice. But obviously it's not beach weather, so you're not going to spend it at the beach or possibly the resort. But if you wanted to explore old Dubai, you wanted to maybe go out to Fujaira, which is a couple of hours away, you wanted to sort of go off the beaten path. It's a or even weather. just walk. Just walk, yeah, just walk. <laughs> just walk to the corner shop, with man. That, with that, you know, a sweat of, you know. But this definitely. is the coldest. I've been here over yeah. four years now. This is the coldest it's I've cold. ever yeah, seen. The, yeah, in the two and a half years I've been here, this is definitely the coldest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We went to uh, Dubai Hills Park yesterday. And, uh, Thanks for the invite. I, I was freezing. <laughs> Dude, you can't do anything without, <laughs> without sending someone's... a message to everyone in your phone book. And then, God forbid, he's like, you have to hide everything I did. I, I went out on a date yesterday with my wife. Thanks can, for the can, invite. Can you, can you apologize to Z that you didn't invite him to? I want to apologize too. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so anyway i did things without you guys the last few days all right so i apologize for that also had dinner today with my family no invite okay. there either sorry can remember barbecue next week's canceled you're uninvited <laughs> oh. sorry, honestly it's i was one gonna make one. up an excuse and not come anyway <laughs> no i'm just kidding i'm actually really looking forward to it man no worries, i love man. uh i love a guy's day barbecue whatever it is a, it is a guys i don't know what i'm gonna do with the missus and the kids man but they're getting the boot that night man nice they're, nice. Not, they're getting a hotel or something <laughs> oh, cool awesome they can go hang out at my house with my wife and kids why not man <laughs> <laughs> um so anyway you're talking about dubai and the weather here and look, yeah yeah go well, ahead. look the weather the weather's obviously changed it's a lot busier now um i think people are shocked i think i've acclimated to uh, D- Dubai weather where it's usually 30 to 40 degrees Celsius. By August, it's almost 50. Wow. Um, yep. But you can always see the tourists from the residents. Definitely. Right? The residences, like, if you've only been here for less than a year, a year, you're still, if you came from a cold country, you're going to... This is summer, this is, right? This is, this is short and <laughs> shirt 
sh- shorts and shirt, uh, weather, uh, sorry, um, clothing that you would wear. But if you've been here for two years or more, you have acclimated, it's cold, you're wearing full winter gear, and people are going to look at you going, uh, Who's a local? Yeah. <laughs> Who's well, they just local? released uh, Home Alone and Home Alone 2 on Netflix. Yeah. Uh, you know, I know each region is different. So at least in the UAE here, it was just released last week. So we had like a little marathon where we watched with the kids. They had never seen it. And of course, the second one is in New York and it's snowing and it's so cold. Yeah. And actually, there's a part of me that missed it, right? Like, because where, where I'm from in North Carolina, it gets cold. It might snow once or twice a season. And we might get like actual like real snow sticking to the ground once every few years, you know. Um, but I remember as soon as it does that, I'm like, oh, I hate the cold. I can't wait yeah. for it to get hot again. Yeah. But the grass is always greener, you know, yeah, on the definitely. other side. Yeah, well, look, I, 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 I don't here. go. I don't. Um, I avoid going back to Australia in July, June, July, August. Because that's, that's your winter, winter right? yeah. yeah. And I avoid it. And that's not even a proper winter. Like it's might hit five to ten degrees uh, Celsius. So it's not even that cold compared to Europe. You know, or obviously Antarctica and other really, really cold places. <laughs> so, I mean, our winter is relatively mild compared to other Detroit. places. Detroit, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chicago. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's three, four months you're snowed in, you know, I think a lot of times in those in those states. Um, those are cities. Yeah, keep going. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm back always, in the country of Chicago. <laughs> we can we can we can do a one day. Uh, Kareem teaches Ali and Timmy about the fifty. About the fifty states. Is it fifty or is it fifty two? No, it's fifty. But you Texas know what? I grew country? up. <laughs> Plus the territories. <laughs> yeah. Plus the territories. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, living in Dubai has honestly been super awesome. Dealing with the weather, it's sometimes really really hot. Yeah. This last week, it's been cold but like not unbearable but living here and especially since we've launched this podcast you always get questions like how did you do it what did you do what did it take to get you there you even get like some personal questions like what were your mind th- set when you went and what did you find what yeah. were the pros and the cons so we agreed that we thought that we'll make a podcast hopefully for our listener to find out if he or she wants Listen to listen by now right you, you think so i, I think, think so hopefully it's, in, hopefully it's in the millions by now <laughs> oh are both of your parents listening now <laughs> thanks mom and dad <laughs> but they didn't subscribe my, yet my, my wife ain't listening man so uh, i hope someone is <laughs> my wife will listen until the until we piss her off so let's see how long <laughs> we can go um well, she so, likes me huh what if she just listens to the timmy parts and the rest of it she doesn't listen to it man just then fast we'll forward pro- then we'll have a problem <laughs> She likes to be bored or what? (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, man, so we thought, we agreed that we will take the opportunity to kind of give Mm -hmm. our listener an idea of what it takes or the steps and the processes, what to expect when and if moving to Dubai. Um, So I wanted to ask you guys, and I think we touched on it in a previous podcast, you said you had visited Dubai before you moved here. Yes, that's right. right. I, I, when you visited, did you know that you were going to move here one day or it was... So I was coming in, uh, I was consulting for another company. Okay. And I actually started to help them to, to look at operating here in the UAE. And it was a surgeon? Operating. Yeah. <laughs> not not <laughs> these US terms. I'm going to make him laugh we're, once. We're, we're going to have a tally of that and, number of times he doesn't laugh. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, Can we keep it on the side? Ding! And yeah, then, uh, it. So I was coming back and forth. Um, and then I, told, I said to my wife, hey, look, we should come for a visit. Came for a visit in 2018 uh, with the kids. Uh, I had three at the time. Did you know at that time you were were you thinking about? I making was thinking. The move? I was thinking it because I had come into. I'd, I'd been in Abu Dhabi and Dubai for that time on and off for about a year. Okay. And this is where I started to think, geez, it's safe, it's, it's clean. Yeah. There's no violence. There's no racism, um, and all this stuff. But I came in as you know when you're coming in and out of the country, you're, coming, you're still coming as a tourist. Right. 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 Um, and then when I made the decision to do something on my own with some business partners, um, you still, I still think you're, a, you're technically a tourist until you live here full time. Yeah. Um, so once I set up the first business and then went through the visa process, there was a lot of things that I was not aware of. 
and there was a lot of pain that I, I experienced and a lot of cost that I probably could have avoided. Well, that's what we're hoping to yeah. do with this with this um, session here is yeah. to kind of guide guide our listener into what's the right way to go, how to avoid these things, how to save time and how to save money. Ali, let me ask you though, you had you visited Dubai? I know we touched on it in previous podcast, yeah. but I can't recall what you said. Well, yeah, uh, multiple times. So okay. pretty much... Uh, Baller, my from, bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, we used to try and make it... <laughs> He laughs at his own <laughs> fucking hand push <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, man. Um, we normally try to ma- we we try to make it a yearly tradition. Okay. Where wherever we would go, so we normally we used to travel once a year. We always like to end our trip in Dubai. Okay. Because it was on the way back to Australia anyway, mo- to, from most destinations. Okay. And then every time we would come, we just love it more and more because every time we came, there was something new to do. The people were so nice. Um, you know, locals and tourists alike. <laughs> um, it was safe. You could go out late. You could get a babysitter, leave your kids at the hotel or, or in the Airbnb and go out on a nice you know, date night, you and your wife. So we would come every year. I'm going to cut that part out. What is this? Uh, the, the date night, I'm cutting that out. I don't want my cutting wife that? to get in the No ideas. worries, man. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, we just <laughs> fell in love with it. We fell in love with it. And I, th- I think the UAE is one of the few destinations that when you holiday in it, you can picture yourself living in the UAE. So like I've traveled to Europe, you know, I've traveled to a lot of, you know, say Fiji, Vanuatu, um, you know, even even like different states in Australia. And every time I'd come to the UAE, I'd be like, I could live here. I could work here. You know, I, I could get used to the lifestyle here. So for sure, it's uh, I think a lot of countries you don't sort of, even though you might enjoy holidaying there, you don't get that same feeling. Yeah, for sure. Uh, if you guys care to know about my story, yeah. I visited uh, the first time in 2016, strictly vacation, mm-hmm. strictly coming to have a good time. First time? That was my first time coming in 2016. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, we went home and we were back in the States uh, for like a day or two. Had the holiday like, blues, right? I was like, man, that was fun. Yeah. That was awesome. And like, we could do that long term. So we came back with a completely different mindset. Let's see what it's like. And even though we weren't ready to make the move, we looked at apartments, we looked at cars. We were just, even the way we drove around, we drove with a different mindset. Look how many pharmacies there are. Okay, let's order. Like we were downloading the Dubai apps, right? That we didn't use while we were visiting mm. the first time. But now like, let's see how easy it is to get all of these deliveries. And man, we, we absolutely fell in love. And then today we'll talk about the process that all of us took, uh, took to go into that. So uh, Timmy, if you don't mind if I ask you, when you're looking to come into Dubai, you obviously have to get permission. You have to get a visa, sponsor, something. Can you touch on kind of briefly the different sure. routes so, that you could go so to make that happen? There's a number of visas, but the four main visas to go through, uh, the one is the, the most common is an employment visa. We're not talking about MasterCard visa, right? No, we're talking... I just about, thought of that right we're now. About, we're, talking right about, now. <laughs> we're talking about employment visa. So you've gotten, a job from, you've gotten a job from another company, right? And... Uh, you're sponsored by that company. They pay for your visa. They go through your Emirates ID. They pay for your insurance. Um, and then you become a, a resident and you're sponsored by that company. And usually that visa is two or three years, which then can be renewed um, if, you're, if, you're, if your employment contract continues, it will renew. Um, the second but one- But they're paying for all the fees of your visa. For your visa. For yeah. your visa. Yeah, and absolutely. if you have a family? No, oh, it depends. Uh, some some employers, depending on the type of company, uh, may decide to pay or subsidize uh, any any um, dependents. Other companies will say it's all on you, right? Okay. Uh, the next one is uh, the property uh, going down the property route. So if you buy a property in the UAE for two million uh, dirhams, about five hundred sixty-five thousand US, um, you can. Um, obtain a, a gold visa, uh, and that visa is 10 years, and that is completely independent of any employer. Correct. So you can still be employed by somebody, but you're, you're under your own visa. Which is, I mean, a yeah. major advantage. Which right? is an advantage. Yeah. So if you, you have, have a, a little bit of a peace of mind, that's right? right. Yeah. Um, the third one is. Uh, Can I ask you a question about that one real quick? The two yeah. million dirhams you're talking about five hundred and forty thousand U.S. dollars, whatever it is in mm. Australia, nobody cares. So that <laughs> visa, ding! Oh no, he did. He, he did, did laugh. laugh a little bit. That's a good one, man. <laughs> when I was this, it's getting country, late. That's when right. I was this in this country, he laughed. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but look how hard he laughed at yeah. it. It's getting late. Anyway, what a hater. So, uh, so when you buy a property here, do you have to have paid 
in no. full for that property no. in order you, to get that visa? Before it used to be um, a certain percentage. I think it was like 20%. You had to at least pay 20%. Okay. Plus uh, the DLD, which is... Right, which, and all the, all, yeah, all all the, the taxes. Yeah. Uh, but now I believe they've just passed the, a new order, a new law. Um, I don't know when it's in effect, but... Um, you, as long as you have a contract, okay. you can begin the process okay. now. So you just have to commit to a property, commit. so find the property the that contracts. you enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, that you, and a lot, of com- a lot of properties now are offering you know, f- 1%, 10, 5% up front. Some are even 0% with a 1% per month. Well, yeah, they're incentivizing yeah. people to buy. Absolutely. We're talking about 1% just real quick because we don't want anybody mm. to think these are interest payments. You're talking about 1% of the value, like of the whatever property. you're yeah. paying against, you pay 1% a month. So it's yeah. going to take you... One percent, a hundred. It's going to take a hundred months to to make those payments. Well, well I think well, it's up typically, I, I typically think it's up to a certain point. Yeah. I think it's up to a certain point, and then when you complete, you have well, to pay the Arada rest. Well, is not Arada is not a sponsor of ours, but theirs mm. is one percent a month. Yeah. they're in charge of. By yeah. the way, yeah, they, theirs is one percent a month for the entire time. So yeah. you're about eight years and some change, <laughs> and you and you'll have it paid look, off. Yeah. Even after handover, you still continue the one percent. Look, look a it month. definitely depends on the project, the size, the scale, the developer. Um, a lot of projects are twenty percent. You know, at the very beginning, there may be 1% a month or 5% every three months. And then normally towards the end of the project, you pay the last 20%. But obviously, mm-hmm. people on different budgets, different areas, there's a, there's a package to suit everyone. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the next one, uh, the next visa is the business route. Is when you come in as an entrepreneur, you set up a business here in the UAE. Uh, you ask, as long as you're a part owner or the full owner, your visa is sponsored by the company. And as long as the company's existing you've got a visa the company right? that you're starting yourself here in the uae yeah okay whether you can do owner, that yeah absolutely as, an, as yeah. coming from outside uh, you can yeah, come yeah. here and start a company that's right okay um and you know usually that visa is two or three years like the employment one and then needs to go, needs to go through a renewal um the the next one um is the uh and I'll talk about the golden visa because it outlays because you can have an entrepreneur gold visa. Yes, I was going to say you can yeah. have um, an employment gold visa. So yeah. if you know if you're earning over thirty thousand dirhams per month, you can now apply for your own uh, for a gold visa. Yep. Um, the entrepreneur one gold visa. So for an example, is I have an entrepreneur gold visa, um, well, and the last one is the freelancer, which is is it's been around for about three or four years is where you can um, come into the country as a, like a contractor, effectively, a consultant. You're not under any employer's con- uh, sponsorship. You're under your own. It's usually every one or two years, I think it is. Yeah. And um, you, can do, you can work for anyone um, in, the, in the UAE, but just like a contractor. You might have a job with this uh, employer. You might have a job with that employer. You're not under there. You're not an employer. I envision it for somebody like a, a social media influencer or a photographer or a marketing designer. Yeah, but you could be a web designer. You're bouncing around. around, you're, bouncing around right, right. you're just doing jobs. Right, exactly. Consultant and short-term, architect. Short-term, yeah, yeah. short-term jobs. Yeah, yeah for short-term, sure. Short-term yeah. or long-term jobs. But ideally, you just don't want to be You pretty much work for under, yourself. Yeah, you're working yeah, yeah, for yourself. Yeah. You don't want to be under anyone. Right. Um, well, I mean, you can enjoy the lifestyle of the UAE without working in the yeah. UAE, effectively. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the freelance visa allows you to work in the UAE but also allows you to make money outside of the UAE. So, so if you don't have 2 million dirhams to buy a property... It's the best option. If you're not hired by a company here, or, or this is a great option to come and spend the money that you've saved or the money that you're making from back home. For example, for you, your accounting yep. business that you have in Australia. Yep. You're living here, running that business there, and this gives you a great option. Yep. Well, see, me and Karim um, both um, came to the UAE on a freelance visa because it gave us that flexibility we were looking for um, and, and now both of us have obtained a golden visa. If, if, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure you've got a golden visa too. Correct. So we, we sort of use the freelance visa route maybe in a little bit of a different way than what it was intended. Um, we, we, so, it was sort of try before you buy. So I know with me, I didn't want to commit to our property. You know, at the beginning, I didn't want to open up a business. I wanted to seek, will I enjoy the lifestyle in the UAE as much as I did as a tourist? So uh, I'm speaking for me personally. I obtained a freelance visa. They gave me two years, mm-hmm. and then within those two years, I, I mean, I, I, I'm in love with Dubai even more than what I was before, and then I converted it into a golden visa, which gives you certainty, 10-year visa. Um, you know, yes, 
it's actually long term a golden visa is cheaper than a freelance visa, but we'll get into that a little bit later. We're talking when we're talking about the fees that you pay for the visa. Yeah, for the government. Two million dollars. No, 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 no. Yeah. So free- you might scare our listener into thinking that these other visas that you mentioned are more than two million dollars. We'll, we'll so. Okay, so a freelance visa, like we'll just quickly talk about price. Could be ten to fifteen thousand. That I'm some a little bit cheaper, for some a bit more. That's for okay. two years, yeah. Yeah. we're talking about twenty five hundred, four thousand dollars, somewhere in that range. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But whereas a golden visa is twenty to twenty five thousand, that I'm over ten years. So effectively, that's you, the property one, though. The property one, yeah, yeah correct. So that's not the entrepreneur, and we can. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I, I mean the property one specifically. Yeah. Is that what so. you paid? Yeah. That's the pro- That's the property one. No, that's not okay. I don't yeah. want to say anything because I don't want to get booted out the country <laughs> if I did something wrong. No, no, you paid less. Good on you. Yeah, no, 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 I, no yeah. I, I know I paid a bit more, um, but I didn't mind. You know, it was sort of someone that I sort of knew, wanted happy to give him my business and stuff. So, okay. um, yeah, but that includes their fee as well. It's government fees and charges and their fee as well. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. No, and so, then, so, so all generally the, the property the property path to gold visa is the most expensive route, right? But you can, as I said, there's the employer employment. Gold visa where you earn thirty thousand dirhams or more from an existing employer, usually a very big one, yeah. And or the entrepreneur route. Um, now, at the start, when they were giving out these golden visas, it was very rare. You had to be a, a, a someone who contributed um, and uh, to the UAE. Um, and when I got my gold visa, I had to be sponsored by someone that worked in the government uh, to do it. Right. But now. Because I think they've seen how attractive the gold visas are and how much people want them. I mean, having five or ten years of security, yeah. right, is a big thing. Um, they've become a lot more popular, and a lot of people are willing to move from their country and settle here. and And they think UAE, in particular, Dubai time, is a great place. But at the same time, in case you're searching, especially online, if you're searching for the perks of a golden visa, you'll find five years ago that there was a whole slew of different perks that you had and now unfortunately they've taken a lot of these perks away yep. because they've offered it to so many people. Yep. However, under the golden visa you can sponsor your your wife, your uh, grandparents, her parents as well. You can of course sponsor your kids and you can even sponsor up to I think 10 yeah, or maybe more uh, workers, like domestic workers, whether it's a maid, a driver, yep. employees to work for you, anything And they like get that. the full so length you, of, uh, of sponsorship as well. Yeah, anybody so who's sponsored. if you've got a five-year yeah. visa, it's a five-year visa. All the visas it's that 10, you're talking 10. about yeah. run parallel to your visa. That's right. So if you've got a three-year visa for your employer and you sponsor someone, they've got a three-year visa. Absolutely. So your visa gets canceled after only one year. Their visas their also visas will get, get canceled. canceled as well. And that's what's attractive about getting a golden visa is that if your company failed – or whatever, as long as you've got that golden visa, right, you can still stay in the country and find something else to well, do. I mean, it works the other way too. You know, so with the freelance visa, you have to be in the UAE at least six months of the year. That's right. Whereas with a golden visa, you actually don't have you to don't be. Have you to. can never come to the wife oh, for the next 10 years. No, I, mean, no. I was here all the time, yeah. but I didn't know that about yeah. the first yeah, you one. Have, oh, wow. You have to stay minimum yeah. more than six months. If you stay less than six months, they cancel your freelance oh, visa. Oh, wow. Or any visa. Actually, that's, to be honest, even employment, employee, it plays the same, yeah. it's yeah. the same, it's the wow. same role. Yeah. Right? If you're not in the country. So I know a lot of people who were just coming for a day in, into the UAE just so that their visa Keep would be visa renewed active. and then... Yeah. Then they'd go back to their whether were they living in Bahrain or UK or wherever it was. Yeah, yeah. They'd have to do a, a visa run. Yeah, got you. Yeah. So these are the these are the common visas, right? And then obviously there's a process then to obtain those visas. Of course. And obviously each visa has its own costings, own advantages and disadvantages, but they're the they're the main yeah. ones. Look, if you're in, if you're sponsored by someone, generally it's the it's the responsibility of the employer to pay for your visa. Your Emirates ID and the insurance that goes with it. Well, if insurance it, is a must, regardless of which visa we're talking about. Yep. You have to have insurance before they issue you an Emirates ID. That's right, so especially you, the first time. Yeah, so you start the, the, first time. the you start the application process, then you contact an insurance company, tell them I want insurance for me, my wife, whoever it is. Then they quote you something. I think you even pay. And upfront. then they show you, they send you something that says you have insurance yeah. and you take this to the office and they say, okay, you have insurance. Now we'll, so essentially then everybody we'll the in the UAE has yeah. insurance yeah. if they're abiding by the rules and That's the laws. Right. That's right. <laughs> no, but, but it depends. Look, a lot of people, whether they, when they come into the country the first time and they want to sponsor, let's say, their family, they might just get the bare basic insurance package. 
right? Yeah. Just to get in, just to tick the box. Yeah. It doesn't matter right? what insurance it, doesn't it is. Matter. It could it doesn't be matter. the cheap as one, 2,000 dirhams a year. It could be an expensive one, 20,000 dirhams right? a year. For sure. Um, but because uh, the UAE follows uh, an American style insurance system, Right. Um, Dude, right, <laughs> right. Um, well, see, so we carpet. come we come from countries where we yeah, actually have a good <laughs> welfare, a uh, 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 health system, right? Um, but uh, you yeah, know, my tax bill, my tax bill right. for that. But because the UAE follows the American style, it's you got to pay for it. Which yeah. You get what you pay for. Yeah. Um, now, once that's done, you've got and you're, you've you've gone through all your biometric tests and your blood work, you know, your blood test and you've been approved. Um, what do you mean by biometric and blood work? And so biometric is you get your thumbprint, your eye scan. Okay. And that's compulsory, that's right? Compulsory. It's not optional. There's yep. no way to get exempted. That's right. From. This uh, is part of the visa application process. Visa and, uh, yeah, visa for, process. For so all. they're documenting <clears throat> basically who you are. So that they can always catch you, spot you, anything. Well, it's just to and see if you're healthy as well. It's a hel- it's, it's it's a health. I think it's mainly for health reasons. Well, the blood. It, yeah, blood well, this, is the health. Well, when you talk about yeah. biometrics, this is definitely That's not security. about health. This, yeah. Is, yeah, this is 100% security. Yeah. But they also take blood work from you. And I think, if I remember correctly, Excellent. she asked me to take off my shirt. And she maybe fondled sure. me or so. I can't remember, but she was checking <laughs> she liked, something she, on my chest. But some she women, they're pregnant. Uh-huh. She women, must have heard women, that US some accent. No, but <laughs> seriously, she did something. I swear, I know no, women have to joke, take, but women, she did something. Well, I took so, off my shirt. Now, women take the x-ray. A lot of women have the x-ray unless they're pregnant. Okay. Yeah, um, I had to do the x-ray too. So maybe I had to do the x-ray too. Yeah, because yeah. 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 I do remember I took off my shirt. I don't take off my shirt for anybody. I didn't get fondled, man, unfortunately. I didn't get fondled like you did. Bro, she would have to fondle you like this. She had to get a step stool. But, uh, but they do this, and we touched on it on a previous episode because they basically want to make sure that you're not bringing in any diseases into yeah, the like country. Like tuberculosis, AIDS, some of those that, you know, that, that have... Like that. Yeah. yeah. Now, once that's done and you've passed, and then the next process is... Um, and that, which is the next cost, so, sorry, Timmy, which is that, the Emirates ID. The, that medical stuff, just to make it clear, that doesn't include children. It's only for the adults. So it's only you and your wife. Your kids are not required to do a blood test. None My wife was 15 yeah. when I moved here, so she didn't have to get it done either. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna get us cancelled. Right. Now, <laughs> now I didn't once say the, we were married. <laughs> once, once that's done, and you, I'm you, kidding, your, by vi- the way. your I'm visa's kidding. approved, right? Your visa's approved. Yeah. Right. I mean, you can leave the country with the visa, but when you come back, you need to do your Emirates ID. Yeah. Okay. And that's the card, right? And again, you can't leave until uh, the the Emirates ID. Do you have process. something like an Emirates ID in Australia? No. We no. don't have a national card. Yeah, we don't either. We um, have a driver's license we, we, yeah. sorry, issued uh, by the state. We, uh, as citizens, don't have one. But if you come as a foreigner, there's something called a photo card now, okay. which is a photo ID. Okay. Um, it's, but it doesn't really have much power. It's just sort of to identify who I you I guess are. we have a green yeah. card, actually, in the States. They yeah. do issue green cards for... But isn't a green card more, more of a visa? More of a... Yeah. Like yeah. You're we, don't, to we, don't have a yeah. we don't have a... a, a look, most, a lot of governments around the world are talking about having an ID card. Yeah, we, they. Tr- I'm sure that they've they've had the discussions in the U.S. They've had the discussions in Australia. But the Emirates ID is really dope, man. It has a chip in there, so yeah. wherever you go, they stick it in. They get yeah, all your yeah. information. They know where you are. You don't have to fill out paperwork. Yeah. Sometimes they even ask you to put your thumbprint to verify it's you. It's like it's all linked in this yeah. huge, even through the you even know the you cell got, phone providers yeah. and all these. Some companies. places, even some hotels used to you know yeah, in the yeah. early days used to put yeah, your, it's uh, super nice. Right. When I get an Ajari, when I renew my Ajari, which is the rental agreement, I would put my thumbprint on and it would scan. It's okay. Well, that's who you are. It's, so you're not. It's, you're not pretending to be someone that. You right, know. right, right. So it's a. It's a know your customer KYC check. Yeah, yeah. Um, now once you've got your visa, um, once you've got all your visas, and you've got your Emirates ID, then a few things can happen. You now have the right to obtain a, a, a rental property. Well, look, just re- re- real quick. And you can sponsor your dependents. Before you go that far, because I think before the podcast, we were all talking about the issues that we ran into yep. in doing this first step of getting a visa. So I would love for you, Ali, if you want to tell us, you don't have to tell us the story you went through, yeah. but just touch on these documents that we talked about that you need to bring and so, have done. and so Because this can save a lot of time. If you can prepare definitely. these documents before you even step foot in Dubai, you could save a lot of money and a lot of time. Definitely. So... so um, there's something here called attestation, which pretty much means that uh, the UAE government wants to make sure your paperwork is authentic. So generally you need to get your marriage certificate, your children's birth certificate, and any of your qualifications. So what I mean by qualifications, like your degree, attested. So essentially attested means it gets stamped at, say, say me, I'm Australian, at the Australian, say, embassy or the relevant government organisation. Then it gets stamped at the UAE embassy in Australia. Then you bring it with you. 
and you get it stamped at the UAE embassy here. That sort of certifies that these documents are real, and then you they ha a lot of your visa applications, your documents have to be attested or certified. If they're not, that's going to delay your visa. Correct. So what happened with me? I forgot to attest my documents before I came. Forgot or did you didn't know? That's what I, I, was I actually say the same didn't thing. know. Sorry, you know what? I didn't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry, I, I don't know why I said. Even I when you search these things online, because I did a up. lot of research, it's not clear. No. It's Honestly, not. the majority of the things that you see are some three assholes sitting on a table talking about a podcast like they know things, <laughs> and they're not being like really detailed no. about anything either. But you find all these websites, and they're just telling you basically what you said, yeah. but they're not telling you exactly what it is. So yeah, I think you touched on. It. I think it was perfect. Those are the exact documents yeah. that you need that you have to get attested in the states. If I could just touch on it real quick, yeah, of what I had to do is I had to send our birth certificate all of that to our state of North Carolina secretary of whatever in North Carolina then to the secretary of state of the US right mm -hmm. I think they still call it a secretary of state and then to the UAE embassy in the US I had to do all of that um, and for anyone and you can do it all yourself and save a lot of money of doing it yourself but we have these centers here called typing centers mm -hmm. right um, and you can reach out to any of these typing centers find them online and they can do all of this work for you the fee is not really that much no, it might be a thousand reasonable. fifteen hundred dirhams per you know yeah. you're talking about make three sure, four hundred bucks i'd also say make sure you get passport photos and that one for your local country and one for your for the uae because yeah. the countries have different specs requirements requirements yeah. Yeah. um and i've learned the hard way that even the visa your photo might be accepted on the visa, but, not but they're the not person. on the Emirates ID. Yeah, yeah. that's right. right? Yeah. And I don't understand. It's the same photo. Yeah. But for some reason, it can be rejected. Um, I was lucky because I was going down the business route. We had a business portal, so I kind of knew what to do. However, when I was doing it by myself, it was a f painful experience. Yeah. And so I went the second time when it came to my, my family, no, 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 I'm not doing this. I went straight to a typing center, yeah. is what Kareem just said, yeah. and they handled it for me. The good thing was I, I was aware of the attestation process, what? right? But what I wasn't aware of, how much it costs to self-sponsor your family. Yeah. And again, there's the visa process, and then there's the Emirates ID card. And both of those processes, pro, uh, steps, sorry, have costs. Yeah. So you think, ah, oh, I've got the visa, great, okay? Maybe it's three thousand dirhams uh, per person. Is that is that an accurate number? I think it was like I think the visa was about two thousand, two and a half for me. Per, uh, for eight, dirhams per person. Per person. So we're talking and about five hundred yep. to six hundred dollars. Right. And then I thought, okay, that's great. And then there's okay. Now here's the fee for the Emirates ID card, which, which was, was less. Was, I, I can't remember. Okay, but, uh, but I can't remember the something? gold. But I definitely can remember the gold, which was a lot higher. I, I right? think I paid about three thousand dirham per person, and that mm. included all the fees. Everything yeah. all Everything, around. Yeah. So you're talking about eight hundred, nine hundred bucks yeah. US per dollars per, per person, 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 right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that sounds honestly, that, to me, that years? sounds like a lot of money. Especially when you're self-funding, when you're self -funding, when you're self-funding from the beginning, and if you're talking about you're bringing yeah. you know five family members, you, your That's wife, right. three kids, whatever, it right. sounds like a and lot. Plus but once you get here, yeah. right, and you enjoy the benefits of Dubai mm. and the tax-free and all of these kinds of things, I, I think it's a no-brainer, man. Yeah. If you yeah. can it's afford reason. it, if if not can everybody afford, can afford, can afford it. it. But, but I, I don't, don't think people who can't afford it, honestly, like nothing well, against. But I don't think they're looking into moving to Dubai. Sorry, no, go ahead. I was going to say I've learned that I've learned that if you are coming into the UAE. Employer, employment, freelancer, business. Realistically, have one year of money. Cash flow saved in, up. Cash flow saved up. Yep. So you can spend it in the first month. <laughs> <laughs> That's one. But two, because I think that um, I experienced that I didn't realize how, much, how costly some things were. And right? it's time consuming and too. Time it can consuming. take up to six months. I mean, it took me six months to get my paperwork done. And then, sorry, not to go back to my story specifically, but because... It's all about I, you, Ali. Do it, baby. <laughs> and because I didn't know about the attestation, I then had to... And, and picture this. I didn't have any of my documents. So my documents were stored in Australia. My marriage certificate and my birth certificates were in a safe. So I'm stuck in the UAE and I need to get these documents attested. And I literally can't get anyone to grab these documents. But then luckily I remembered I had them on my email. Anyway, long story short... Um, I had to then pay a company here to get them attested. I paid a thousand dirham per document 
four thousand dirham, about a thousand dollars American. Wow. When I could have probably paid a hundred dollars American if I right. did it myself when I was in Australia. Right, right. So these are some of the pitfalls and some of the things you want to avoid before you come to the UAE. You don't want to spend. Well, um, more important no than reason. just the money aspect to me. I mean, money is very important, but time. more important than the money aspect is the time. Well, yeah. Because months, all yeah. of this attestation, everything could have been done while you were still in the States or in Australia or wherever you are, right? And then you can come here with all of these documents ready to go. If you've already lined up with somebody from the typing place, if you want them to do it for you, you could land on Saturday, go on Sunday to the typing place, give them everything. Two to three weeks, you'll have everything done. Yeah, They'll tell you, hey, tomorrow, go and do your blood work and do this, show your yep. proof of insurance. Maybe you already shop around for your insurance options, right? And see what they are. And the insurance op options vary, right? Depending on the size of the deductible that you want and what do you want them to cover. Yeah. Like and in which work, hospital like do in you the want? Work. Yeah, yeah, of course. Because some, some, uh, one thing that I learned here is, I mean, in Australia, we're not used to uh, this idea of network. Yeah. You know, Come on, every, you have private hospitals in Australia. Yeah, but it's not like here. It's not like here. If or you've got private, you're private across, across the board. Okay. Right? We don't have this concept. We used to like 20 years ago. Okay. But since then, all private, if you have a private insurance, any dentist, any hospital, any uh, specialist, you can use your um, um, health, uh, your, your private insurance. Because uh, we have a two tier system in Australia where we have public, public system. Public system. Yep. Um, and then the private system. Got you. But generally, the private system is used, for example, if you want to have an operation or your wife wants to give birth. But if anything goes wrong, they'll transfer you directly to the public hospital. Okay. Yeah. So they're just there as a sort of a, like a helping hand okay. to the public or hospital. Could, just take a bit of pressure. Or more off. of uh, that, that, but it's also the thing is that you don't have to wait. Correct. Right? So in the public sector. In the public. Okay. Well, the public. So, well so um, say you want to do a knee <clears throat> operation or a shoulder operation. On the public system, if it's not urgent, you could be waiting two to three years, maybe longer. Wow. Right? They'll just keep delaying you because someone else might come up that's a bit more urgent. Whereas in the private system, you could probably get it done within a week. But obviously, you're paying for the whole thing out of pocket. Got you. Yep. Okay. Um, so you've got your insurance here in the UAE. Um, you've now got your family here um, in the UAE. But there's, again, one of the things that people have to remember is, okay, uh, if, you're, if you've got a furnished or an unfurnished place, let's say, for instance, it's an unfurnished place, you're going to buy everything. All over again. Well, what did you guys do when you moved here from? Did you guys bring stuff with you? Or you came empty-handed. I came empty-handed. I came empty-handed. Really? About you? Why did you do that? I also came empty-handed. I, I look to be honest, because I was coming down the business route, I sold everything. Yeah. Right. I was confident that we would at least be here for three, three, four years, and um, I felt that <clears throat> the cost of getting a shipping container and right? the time and, and the, the effort eight weeks, and organization, right, yeah. to bring it over. Uh, was it was too, was wasn't worth it. Yep. If you looked at the value of the furniture and then what, ten thousand dollars to ship it over, um, I thought it was way too high. Well, for, uh, no, it's 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 not that much. But no, I, I see what you're yeah, saying for sure. I, I think you'll find most people that do ship their furniture, it's because their employer offers them a relocation allowance. Yep. So they're just like, I might as well just take it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But furniture. I sold everything. I I, I just, because I, my view was I don't know what the place looked. I, I didn't know what the place is, but. You know, in marriage, your wife <laughs> makes the decision on what she wants. Your furniture might suit while you're in home. I didn't even know you have wants right? at all. When right. you're married. That's right. Yeah, I just sit, I just live here. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. Right. Here's the credit card. Here's the, oh, the bills. Check. Just pay right. the bills. And they might come in and say, "Look, I have a, we have a Sorry. we have a we have a friend who shipped all their all their uh, furniture over, and then straight away the wife is like." Nothing fits. <laughs> Nothing fits, and it doesn't match. Yeah, yeah. and, it's and your standards the same change, right? Yeah. When you get here, like yeah. I hate to I hate to say that, man, but your standards do change. Absolutely. So for us, we had a friend who shipped stuff, and it was a horror story, mm -hmm. right? Going through customs and getting <laughs> it, and some stuff broke, and all that kind of stuff. Also, when my wife and I got married, alhamdulillah for everything, we didn't have a lot mm -hmm. of money, so it was a lot of hand me downs and used furniture and things like that. Nothing worth keeping. And then once we had a little bit of money to furnish things the way that we wanted to, we had already decided by that point that we're going to move most likely to Dubai we didn't know for sure but somewhere so we still didn't invest in nice things in our house so there was nothing that we had yeah. uh, I have a couch set back home that I absolutely love but there was nothing else that we had that was worth it and we came and sure enough man you walk in you're like my furniture would have looked small in this big living room and this one would have looked big in this small room mm. and but Karim, not so, just that I found the furniture here to be very affordable I found the beds to be cheaper than Australia I found the couches the ornaments, all the decorations, 
um, mirrors, um, uh, entertainment units. I found them to be very cheap compared to Australia. But to be honest, I didn't move my things because obviously I didn't want to incur the headache and the cost. And my furnishings at my house absolutely suck. Yeah. They deserve to go straight in the tip. But you probably weren't sure as well. No, I wasn't like, sure either. He wasn't sure, you know. Like, yeah. No, I'm saying he what probably... What does that mean? Would, as in like... Yeah, well, so that's what I told you. If you wanted to come back home... Well, yeah, like, but that's yeah. what I'm saying. So the thing is, you know how I told you the freelance visas... Sure? You're I, saying he wasn't sure? 100%. Oh, oh, I thought like, you were saying short. Sure. <laughs> I swear to God, no, and I'm not making a joke. I always make jokes, wasn't that sure. wasn't a joke. I know he was, wasn't short. Well, that's, why I, well, see, that's why I mentioned the freelance visa sort of a try before you buy because right. I signed up to the freelance visa. I paid, So it was a two-year visa, but I paid for one year. And then with the option to pay the second year after the first year, I didn't have to outlay it all up front. I think front. that's what I did too, man. Yeah, I because I wasn't I sure. Too. Because I was worried maybe the missus doesn't like it. Maybe the kids don't get acclimated. Maybe I can't do my job remotely for extended periods of time. But alhamdulillah, it worked out. Alhamdulillah. And um, yeah, I just continued that route. But yeah, so for me, it just I didn't feel like our furniture was nice enough to move over. And I just found the yeah. furniture here to be a lot the nicer than The only thing I did was I did ship, uh, air freight over my PCs, my machines. So that's that's big, I had some yeah. big ones, right? But that's different. Yeah. Um, and even that was... How long ago did you move here that your PCs were this I've got, I've got a, I've got a you know, one of my monitors is the 45... Oh, got you, just the monitor, wow. got you, got you. Right, let alone the, let alone the desktop machines. You right. can tell, man, when we're doing the Teams meeting, he's looking here and then he's like, I'm working over here. <laughs> yeah. over His here. eyes aren't so looking know, at us, yeah, man, yeah. multitasking. <laughs> right? Um, yeah. So... But you touched briefly on, and we'll, we'll let Ali kind of go into details, but about furnished and unfurnished apartments. Yeah. But one thing I wanted to mention is that even when you get an unfurnished apartment, this is what really, really surprised me is that it doesn't come with any appliances. Nothing. Like not even a stove, yeah. not even a dishwasher. Like there's gaps for them there. Dude, there's no curtains, no light. Lighting. The curtains, this is normal for the US. The light, there's a light bulb, but not a like, nice light fixture, right? There's a light bulb hanging from a wire. Looks yeah, like yeah. the homeless guy down the street. <laughs> wired in Australia, it. if you moved into an apartment, you should have a dryer. <clears throat> you should be given a dryer and an oven. Dryer, but not a washer? Yeah, a washer is your own. But you usually get a dryer. That's weird. Send us, right? And usually it's even even if it's an apartment, usually it's curtains. Yeah, curtains. Yeah, curtains are part of in Australia. We get a lot more. Like it's got to be carpeted. It's got to be curtains. Well, see, when I think of curtains, I think of these, right? Like cloth curtains. But now that I think about it, we do have blinds. Yeah, yeah, blinds. blinds. As long as you have something. Yeah. Yeah, Well, in the UAE, you don't get blinds either. No, no, you don't get anything. Yeah, Yeah, right. Well, see, I just moved, right? The only thing that obviously besides you just moved again. Just moved again. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. This for a second time. So um, the only thing that the only appliance that came was the hood. You know the cooking hood. Yeah, that's the only thing they required. I, I took my. I thought stove. you moved into the hood. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't move next Ding. to Timmy. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> hey, I live in the resort area. <laughs> yeah, he has a Trump Tower very close. That's yeah, right. And the Trump proud, Golf. Proud of the Trump it. Golf Club. Do you, the Trump do you play golf? No, not really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no to live in there. We just go out on the golf course and just cruise that's around. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have to buy clubs at least to get into the golf club? Nah, not really. Just hire them? Just hire them. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it doesn't come. So I had to redo I all go the with curtains. A baseball bet. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much I had to redo all the curtains. Uh, I took my stone on your I took tab. My fridge. On my tab. That yeah. fits to their apartment. And the, and the landscaping. I've done it. I've done and then when you leave. Oh, I have to take them. You have to take the them. Yeah. No, no, let's talk about that. Yeah, even the landscaping. So it comes bare. It, so the, uh, the first villa I moved into okay. two years ago, okay. um, you walk in, there's a, a, a walkway, and then on the left is all sand. Wow. I turn to the agent, I'm like, what's this? He's like, yeah, you've got to landscape it yourself. Wow. So it, if you don't landscape it yourself, it's just sand with, um, I don't know, maybe scorpions. Or, I'm not sure. It reminds you that you're it. living in the desert. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Because yeah. people forget, right, that Dubai is in the desert, but these little things here so will pre- remind be you. Be prepared that there's a lot of setup costs. Mm. And... That's why, so for instance, I then moved from an unfurnished apartment. I bought, we just bought basic stuff at the first year. Okay. When it was, and we went through COVID. And so we couldn't stand living in an apartment, even though we were in a really nice area. So we then moved to a furnished villa. Okay. Now, the advantage of a furnished villa is that everything's there, including the landscaping. Yeah. Which was great. And you're talking about all the furniture inside. All the furniture, curtains, wow. everything. Wow. There, look, there stove, are places beds. where even the shower. The shower no screen. Glass. There's, there's yeah, no there's glass. Yeah, yeah. Right? In an unfurnished place, right? Yeah. I don't want to know uh, your details, but can you tell me if you were paying 200,000 dirhams a year for an unfurnished 
what would you pay? Or maybe you would know since you've been shopping. What's the price difference between an unfurnished and a furnished? So from my experience, about 20 to 30%. That's More what I've experienced. More for the furnished one. Yeah, because the thing is they're, they're giving you everything. They're giving you right. the beds. Right, right. They're giving you the pillows. They're giving you, I think, clothes hangers. They're, Pillows too. Wow, yeah, everything. Everything, uh, everything. Kitchen utensils. Kitchen utensils, yeah. Wow. Knives, forks, uh, bowls. Washing machine, dryer. If, they, wow. if they've got yeah. it. Wow. You know, the gr- landscaping. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the landscaping can cost between five to 8,000 dirhams. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, depending on the size of the property. Um, I don't want to keep converting dirhams to dollars every time. If somebody's listening and they really care to know, every, uh, every you know, 10,000 dirhams is $2,700. They can, they can yeah. figure it out. Yeah, right. uh, so... so a lot of people who do come to the UAE for the first time, particularly singles, will probably go down the furnished for sure, furnished route. Maybe even a studio or something. Yeah. No need for a furnished. villa with the yeah. There's a lot again. of places here that you can rent that are furnished. So Ali, when you left the first villa, <coughs> did you roll up your landscaping and bring it with you? Yeah, yeah pr- uh, pretty much. So, nice. So what I had to so uh, my landscaper removed all of the trees that I had planted, removed all of the pavers. And we just moved them to the new villa. Wow. Because even the, even the landlord, even though I made the villa look a lot nicer. He doesn't want it like that. He doesn't that. want it. Yeah. He wants it's, it in the original state. That's a new responsibility for him to w- but it's water. Weird. It, it's kind of weird. It's weird. It definitely I've is had, I've had this. I had this discussion with some landlords, right? When we were looking in the place. And I said, look, why don't we get half and half, right? We, you know, before I, because before I, where I live, right, it was a fully furnished. Before I was looking at unfurnished villas as well. And I said, okay, well, it's going to cost at least five to 8000 Why don't we go half? And then when I leave, it's all yours. Yeah. Nope. And I looked at it and said, but you could then rent it yeah, higher. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Because no, you're just reducing the cost. They're just thinking so small, so Absolutely. short term. Right. They're not thinking about next year. Next year, they'll be kicking themselves in the ass that they didn't do that the previous year with you. Yeah. But that's crazy. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Well, so the thing is, I think the one of the topics we wanted to discuss too was what are the benefits of having it furnished or, and having it unfurnished? And I want to also yeah. ask you about the costs and the deposits because in the States, we'd put a security deposit, Correct. right? So if you screw things up before you move out, they take well, this okay, away so, from you. So going back to, what, so you, going back to um, sort of the paperwork that we spoke about, make sure you get your documents attested before you come to the UAE. The next step would obviously be to find the place. So then you need to decide whether you want it to be furnished or unfurnished, right? Hold on, hold on. The next step after applying for the visa? Yeah, so... For but if ex- somebody's moving... So what are no, they getting... so let's say if you want to bring your dependents... Okay, correct, right? dependents, yeah. You need to have an ajari, which is the rental agreement okay. right? in, the, in Dubai. But I can't do right. that from the States? Nope. No. I can't read out, re, uh, reach out to a landlord and say, hey, I'm moving there January nope. 1st, have the apartment ready for me? You mm-hmm. need to actually have your documents... Uh, uh, you have to have your Emirates ID. And you can't do that until you get here. Correct. So for the first two, three, maybe even four weeks, You're we're in staying apartment. in an apart, uh, yeah. a short-term apartment, rental hotel apartment, hotel. Yeah. or I did. even just I, a hotel. Same as me. I stayed I in did. the Airbnb for three months. Yeah, I was, living in, really? I was yeah. living in a one-bedroom hotel apartment, and then one, once I got my uh, Emirates ID, and then I, I went shopping around for apartments or a villa, decided to buy Hills. The first yeah. was the, the great one. I went through the process, did the Ajari, and then part of that, once I got the Ajari, was then fin- get, initiating the first step of the visa process, For the which gives them an entry yep. p- wow. a permit to come wow. into the country. Well, see, so, so generally, yeah. right, you, so with, let's assume us three are the breadwinners. The breadwinner would get his visa, which means he gets his Emirates ID. Then you'd lock in an Ajari, which means that you'd find the property. Okay. So before you even sponsor your family, you would, ch- you would choose whether you want your apartment or your villa or your house to be furnished or unfurnished. So once you've decided, but as we discussed, furnished obviously is going to be a lot more expensive because the owner's literally giving you everything. Um, that could be a good thing, that could be a bad thing, just depending on how long you want to stay in that, in that place. If you want to move from year to year, I recommend furnished is better. But if you plan to stay there three, four or five years, obviously unfurnished because you probably make back the cost of, the, of, of all of your furnishings within the first year. Anyway, leave that to the side for now. So once you've decided um, whether it's furnished or unfurnished, you want to choose the location. Now, from my experience, you, you definitely, as much as possible, would love to choose a property in a location. So whether this is buying or renting, some people might decide to buy when they come instead of renting. They might, that might be their plan from the beginning. I choose somewhere that is relatively close to your children's school 
and if possible, close to your work, to your place of employment. I think that goes anywhere, right? Well, I mean, it does go anywhere, but I mean, some places. But you're saying especially because the traffic. The traffic. Here. Yeah. That's the it's thing. Insane. Didn't used to be, but now the traffic. Well, because yeah. you might be sitting back home. Let's mm-hmm. say you're back in the states, and you find a school, right? And you look it up, and you find it's ten miles from the apartment that you're looking at. And in the states, that ten miles takes you ten minutes. Yeah. So you're There's like, no oh, traffic, that's close right? as hell. Yeah. I, 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 but if you put the directions mm-hmm. here during yeah. peak hours, you'll find that it's those ten miles yeah. might take you 40, yeah. 45 yeah, look, minutes. I, I, I tend to agree with Ali in the sense that it's better. Do you ever find... agree with me about anything? <laughs> Not really. Okay, <laughs> right. But I'll give you an example. There are different reasons why you want to fi- find different areas. So, for an example, for you, I think Ali, when one of the things that probably and just correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. Is you like the beach? Oh, I love the beach. You want it to be yeah. close. I to the love beach. beaches. For yeah. me, <laughs> beach. <laughs> beaches, beaches. Oh, beaches! Oh, I'm beaches. so sorry. For, for myself so sorry. and my family, we actually but wanted I do. I do. pools. We wanted parks. We wanted, a min- you know, the, all the. Of course, you want the, the community. We wanted living. the community living. So for us, the community living was a little further out. Yeah. Um, but that came at a cost. Where we got the great community living, but schools were further. Yeah. You know. So I guess it depends. Because what Dubai you're makes for, right? these. Like in Egypt, they call these compounds, right? Yeah. They call them, and now nowadays they call they're calling here. fifteen minute yeah. cities, right? Yeah. Fifteen. So it's a community, right? That once you order, once you enter, let's say Dubai Hills community, you've got tons of grocery stores, schools. You might even have hotels, Mall, parks, malls. malls. You have everything. Parks, you could everything. You could not leave for weeks on end yeah. unless your job you is outside. To. Yeah, if yeah. you didn't want to. Yeah. Well, see, that's the thing. Obviously, it depends what you're looking for. I, I mean, right. I'm speaking for me personally, but I think. Most people, even even back in Australia or the US, you generally want to live close to your kids' school. You don't want to sit there and commute an hour each day right, just right. for schooling or for work. So th- once you've cho- sort of chosen the location, uh, and, and obviously, look, before you come to the UAE, I'd recommend a couple of websites. They're not sponsoring this podcast, but there's not Buy yet. It. Not yet, hopefully soon. Uh, there's the Buy It app. There's the Property Finder app here in the UAE. They're amazing. You filter out the searches, how many bedrooms, the locations, just to sort of give you a little bit of an upper hand in negotiations with the landlord. Um, but obviously the next part is the most complicated and, and sort of the most important part, negotiating your rent. So there's a lot of hidden expenses. So obviously you want to try to get the best rent you possibly can, so the best deal. But um, here in the UAE, I know this is going to be strange for a lot of our listeners outside of the UAE, the tenant, so the renter, has to pay the agent's commission, which is a flat 5%, and the security deposit, which is 5%. Now, the security deposit is generally of course. same everywhere. Yeah. But, but normally, you bring up a good, yeah, this is a really good point to bring up, yeah. Well, yeah, so the agent's commission, I mean, if you're paying 1000 dirham a year in rent, 5%, that's a lot of money, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. So unfortunately, that's a cost you have to pay. That's and, insane. Yeah, and it's normally- Is it like that in Oz? No, so normally in Australia, the landlord pays. So normally the, the agents take the How first two weeks. How about if you're buying and selling? Does the seller also pay? Well, we don't, we don't tend to have brokers here in, in Australia. So generally, the, let's say a, a real estate agent is, wants to, they're finding tenants so they can manage the property. Right across. Yeah, yeah. The, so they'll the charge you like a two week. So it's, yeah, yeah, property management fee. That's where yeah, they yeah. get their money. Yeah, yeah, Here yeah. it's just, hey, I yeah. just found your property. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Give me the money lump sum. And wow. So many real estate agents are just sellers, yeah. effectively, or finding finding a tenant, and that's it. That's as far as they go. Yeah. Once the ijari is being set up, um, that's it. You're on your own. Yeah. You're actually dealing directly with the landlord, unless the landlord has actually. Uh, is using a property management company. Got you. Yeah. Which is not very common here unless they have multiple properties. Normally, most one property landlords will do with the with the tenants themselves. Yeah. And yeah, that that's yeah, that's pretty much you know the 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 main gist of you know choosing a property. And then the rent here is also advertised differently. I don't know how it's done in Australia, but in the states, if you're looking for an apartment, a house, a business, anything you're looking for to rent, it's going to be advertised as two thousand dollars per month. Well, normally in Australia, it's weekly. Really? Yeah, weekly. Weekly, well, fortnightly, yeah. or monthly. Yeah. Oh, see, see, that's but the, the reason too. being is because it's a year price. Is because every person signs, uh, or business or individual signs a yearly rental agreement. Well, here in Dubai, yeah. It's a, I yeah, just wanted to yeah. mention that in case somebody's yeah. looking and they see 200,000 dirhams, like that'll scare the hell out of somebody of unless they know that that's actually for the entire year. For the year. whole year, yeah, correct. That's for the whole year. Yeah. Yeah. And then, but I understand that every year you have to then renew your tenancy contract. Yeah. Um, three months before your tenancy contract is due uh, for renewal, um, the landlord might approach you and try to renegotiate let's say the rent or you might want to renegotiate the rent 
The good news is after the last three months, that's it, no more negotiation. Yeah. Um, you're locked just, in. You're locked yeah. in yeah. for the next year. But it is, so like an example is in Australia, you, you don't have to re-sign a tenancy contract. You no. can just let it continue, right. Yeah. right? Just continue, continue. Here in the UAE, you just, you have to have a, um, a new Ajari. And they year. also have a good administration here, the RERA <coughs> administration, that'll help the tenants. It helps both sides, landlords and tenants. But yeah. I feel like from what I've heard, they do a really, really good job of making sure that tenants are treated fairly in regards to, this is basically the agency that you would take any issues that you have, any problems that you have, you would go to them almost like a judge, right, in this case, and say, hey, my landlord did one, two, three, and they would say, no, you can't do that, yeah. and they would put down some type of verdict or ruling that he has to return yeah, They're very here. impartial here, you know, and you find that from most times, you know, they actually are on the renter side if the landlord's doing the wrong thing, and other times if the landlord hasn't done anything wrong, they'll side with the landlord, but you don't hear many complaints about people saying that they've got a a raw deal, most of the time they're very impartial. Yeah. Got you, got you. Now, are a lot of people buying in Dubai and moving into a purchased property or is that like a big step? Most people don't do that. It's an interesting one. I think um, there's a lot of development happening here in the UAE. I mean, it's nothing and, but development. Dude. And, it's um, nothing so but a lot of people are, are buying off the plan and in some people are Off flippers. the plan, just off real quick. Plan, yeah, what does right? that mean? It means that, okay, so the developer, right? has let's say a thousand villas or an apartment building and before they've even built it right mm -hmm. here's the plan it's available for 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 we're going to start purchase. building next month it's could going be, to be ready to move in in, in three years, years but you could st yep. buy today yep. put five percent down make yep. payments as you go and actually i wanted to bring that up because i think if there's people and i don't know how how far ahead people think, and life always changes. But if you're thinking in the next three to five years to make a move to Dubai, mm. and you've got a little bit of cash that you're willing to invest, because normally when you buy off plan, mm. it's much cheaper, Correct. right? If you buy today and it's gonna be done in three years, in three years when it's done, the price has increased immensely. I mean, we're not even just talking about a 20, 30% increase. I mean, we've seen some things that have doubled. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you know. a lot of people are flippers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So what's happening is, is a lot of people, uh, and, and I don't know if, I wouldn't call it a scam, but I mean, this is what a lot of people do is they'll buy like five, six properties, yeah. right, of things. Yeah. And in six months, there are people knocking on their door. Yeah, of course. Uh, saying, look, I'll give you 50% more. Because six months ago, yeah. Timmy, it was just sand. That's right. Right? Yeah. Now, six months later, there's 20 cranes, yeah. and there's pillars going up, and you can actually see it coming yeah. together. And then the hype has gone on, and people are excited about it, and there's waterfront, yeah. and there's this. Well, and it's, it's a, well, Lamborghini is going to design it, right? Yeah. Or Armani is going. Like, yeah. these are things that you don't hear of in so, any other country. It's, it's, some it's supply demand as well. Yeah. yeah. So some places yeah. have been flipped two or three times before they've even before they've handed over yeah of yeah. course of course so so what i was going to say is that if you think that this is the move that you're going to do for you right you're you're over 75 yeah. percent sure and there's no such thing as a guaranteed of investment course. right the economy could crash tomorrow but i think this is a great route to go because these developers give you payment plans at zero percent interest this is also unheard of yeah. and then it's, it's guaranteed by the uae government so i was going to mention that so that's sorry. something that's almost that's extremely rare um, in a lot of countries, here in the UAE, as long as you pay into the developer's escrow accounts, yep. okay, the UAE government guarantees your investment. Yeah. So if for any reason the developer doesn't deliver the project, say they go bust or yeah. they don't stick to their word, the UAE government says we will guarantee whatever you've invested to give you the money back. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, that, uh, there's no other country in the world that has peace of mind. There's horror stories out of Australia, builders collapsing. You know, buildings well, you know, cracking. here in the UAE, it was like that before. Yeah. It used to be like that until this development, the uh, the Pearl. You know the Pearl by the yeah, Palm? Yeah, the one near the Before palm. the Pearl. But that was a huge, huge, huge mess up. Yeah. Once that happened, that's when the Dubai government stepped in and said, hey, man, we got to put some rules. Now the developers can't even touch the money that you give them, these payments, until they hand over the property to you. And some of these payment plans are pay 40%. Let's say 40 to 60% is the average yeah. that you pay before it's ready to be done. Mm. Once it's done, they call that handover, <laughs> then you pay the remaining mm. 40 to 60%. Correct. Sometimes in a lump sum, and sometimes they even take that payment over yeah, years. Yeah, so if flexible. you do this, right, and it's gonna be done in three years, then in three years you move to the UAE, you can avoid all yeah. of this Ijari rental agreements and landscaping yeah. and everything, and you come off the plane straight to your villa, to your apartment, to yeah. whatever you purchase, and avoid all of that. I see, know. this is where choosing the right location and making sure you you get the right price is very important. It's yeah. like anything. Property could be hot anywhere, but if you choose the wrong villa, 
the, maybe it's somewhere where it's loud, where there's a lot of noise, or maybe it's near an entry or near an exit, right. or you choose the wrong project or the wrong developer, you may lose money. Yeah. Yeah. But generally, if you choose the right property in the right location, just by taking into account inflation, you're going to make money. Yeah. Because if you lock in a price, let's just assume 2 million dirham in 2020, and then it finishes in 2025, it's going to be worth at least 1.5 million dirham just because of inflation, because of supply and demand. It went down from 2 5? million to 1.5? Sorry? You mean 3.5? Sorry, 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 3.5. Sorry, I, I must have mis, uh, misspoke. <laughs> so the thing is, and what's what I find here in, in the UAE, if there's a certain nationality living in a certain community and that community gets hyped up, the price shoots through the roof. So there might be a certain pocket where a lot of Russians are living. People like to live around their own kind. A certain area, say Al Garhud, a lot of Lebanese like to live there. So there's a lot of demand among Lebanese. It doesn't mean there's not all different types of nationalities. Of course there is, but generally when there's a hype, like for example, Dubai Hills, when that was first built, people were laughing. Oh, what's Dubai Hills? It's too far from downtown. Now it's one of the most popular communities in all of the UAE. Insane. You can't buy anything it's for... In, the rent and I love it. more than doubled. It's in crazy. The and the villa years. prices, unit prices, oh, some tripled, tripled, yeah. quadrupled yeah. some of them. Now, it's crazy. The downside, I'm going to say this, the downside of the plan is generally there's a lot of construction going on. So even if your villa or your building is up, you're going to be dealing with other construction around. Yeah. So some people then prefer the more established areas. True. You know, like a I ranches. mentioned, I only mentioned this, and of course, this is the real estate guy in me, right? Yeah. Is that instead of, and, and of course, if you decide to move to Dubai tomorrow, that's not that's not an option yeah. for you. But if you're thinking about it and you've got a little bit of extra money, instead of investing it back home, invest it here in Dubai, make a few years payments. If you decide not to move here, no problem, you can, you just can turn it. around and sell yeah. it. Sell it. Then, if you do do it, you can get the golden visa. You can sponsor all your family. Like <clears> you're <throat> going to avoid so many yeah. problems. You know what I mean? And then come here and 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 live. The uh, you know, live the amazing life that that we've all you know grown to love here. Yeah, you know, um, so guys, we have actually uh, you know we're taking a long time, and we still have a lot of things that I think people want to hear. So let's take a break. We'll do this as a part one, and then we'll come back. We're just gonna pause the camera and come right back, and we'll do uh, <laughs> we'll we'll come back and do part two, and we'll we'll keep talking. Okay. Um, cool. So guys, this is part one. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. This is the TaskCast live from Dubai. Stay tuned for part two. Click here or here or somewhere and listen to part two. We're going to continue talking about the things that you need to know if you're thinking about moving to Dubai. Just trying to help you make the decision easier for you, more informed, because we didn't have that, unfortunately. Um, so thank you guys again for listening. Don't forget to follow, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in a few.